What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev. And in this video, we're gonna talk about freelance job tips for software developers. If you guys are brand new to the channel, if you're into tech, entrepreneurship, coding, startups, anything like that, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. That's all we talk about here on this channel. And in this one, I think it's a really cool topic because for anybody who has gotten into software development, web development, software engineering, you guys know that it's a pretty profitable skill set. The things that we're going to talk about are things that pretty much apply in almost any business. A lot of the tips I'm going to share with you guys and the tools I'm going to share with you guys are things that I used to use when directing music videos and doing like photography and videography shoots. But at the same time, you'll see that a lot of it also relates to tech or doing web development software development or pretty much any other entrepreneurial business or service it's all pretty much the same concepts but we're going to tweak it today for tech and coding specifically so these are in no particular order in sense of one is any more important than the others but you know we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it the first thing you want to make sure that you have is a planning or a time estimation strategy. All right, so think about it for a second when you guys are out and you're doing business or you're getting a service, right? You're getting your oil changed or you're waiting for food at a restaurant or something like that. And there's a, a wait period. You're going to want to know some estimation of how long it's going to take, right? Like how long it's going to take for your cars fixed, how long before your food's ready. So in the case of software development, it makes it really tricky because there's a lot of unexpected or a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of things that can come up or change um, that we just might not expect, right? So there's a lot that we need to try to plan for as best that we can and try to be as accurate as possible uh, for the client when we're telling them how long we think it's gonna take to deliver something. There's like a good old adage that they say about under promise and over deliver. Um, and I think there is some truth to that. So in other words, you know, try to be as accurate as possible and realistic as possible. Give yourself enough leeway and time to basically allow for mistakes or for things to go wrong or unexpected obstacles and random things to just come up. And if you give yourself that that padding and you tell the client ahead of time that it might take you, you know, X period of time and then you end up finishing in a shorter period of time because it wasn't as complicated or it wasn't as difficult or you didn't have as many challenges as you thought, then it actually, it actually makes you look better to the client and you end up just saving yourself and it, it makes you look better than trying to meet a deadline in a week or two weeks because you just want to, you know, impress them and show them that you're moving forward. But, you know, you're going to end up having to go back and fix a bunch of things or change a bunch of things. So much better to just take your time or tell the client to be honest with them up front about how long something's gonna take. And then that way they are already expecting that it's gonna take a little bit longer. And then if you can deliver faster, then it just ends up working out better for the both of you. And for stuff like this, guys, there's plenty of tools online so you don't at all have to use the tools that I use. But what I like to do actually is create a document. Um, and you can use Google Docs, that's what I use. But I like to just create a document that basically summarizes my understanding of the project and then also estimates the project out into phases. So I'll put an example somewhere here on the screen so you guys can see. And essentially what it does is it goes over the overview of what I think the client is asking me to build. So what this does is it allows me to put into my own words, my understanding of their project or what they're asking me to build. So it's just like, you know, they say when you're just talking to somebody, right? And if you can repeat back what they're saying to you, then it shows that you are actively listening. So in this case, if you know, you're going to have a bunch of meetings where you're having all these technical conversations and the people you're dealing with aren't super technical all the time, which is another point that we're going to get to in a little bit. But when you have all these ideas coming at you and you have to think about how difficult some things are and think about do you know how to do certain things and think about how you're gonna do certain things and what technology you need to use to make certain things happen there's a lot of things to consider all at one time and it's very hard to just take all that stuff and give an accurate estimate off the top of your head of how long it's gonna take so 
you know, I like to write out my understanding of what exactly I'm going to be building and showing the client that I understand, you know, what we discussed and, you know, here's what I think we're, we walked away with. I like to go into basically the roles of the application. So if there's multiple roles or whatever the functionality is, I like to basically just highlight that with bullet points and just say, hey, this is what this is going to be able to do. If you're this person or if you have this type of access, this is what you're going to be able to do. And I like to just go through that one by one so they understand that these will be the backbone functionality of the application. So then from there, I like to go over estimating out how long I think the minimum and maximum time for each particular feature or piece of a feature is going to take me. And then I'll list it out into, you know, some sort of sprints. So sprints can range guys you've heard me talk about this on the channel before with agile sprints can always range based on what you're doing what type of work you're doing you could also be doing waterfall if it makes more sense for your project you could do waterfall development too so it doesn't have to be agile but in my in my case i like to do uh agile methodology and again the sprints and how long the sprints last can change so in my case i like to usually go with two sprint or in my case, I usually like to go with two week sprints, but you can always change this to be, you know, three weeks, one month, whatever you want it to be. Um, but I like to basically take a two week sprint or whatever. So I like to usually take a two week sprint and then list actually on the document what features I think could be pulled into that sprint. And then I put the feature in there and then I list the minimum and maximum time I think it'll take me to actually complete that feature. Or, and then I list the minimum and maximum time that I think it'll actually take me to complete that feature. So the reason of doing this is because I like to give the client an idea of the minimum and the maximum price of the project. And by tasking out each individual feature or work item and then putting a minimum maximum time that I think it's gonna take me after thinking through it all to actually complete that, you know, best and worst case scenario time then when you get to the very end to tally up the total of the estimate for the project you're showing the client you know the very best case scenario if everything goes you know smoothly what they can expect to pay but you're also showing them worst case scenario what they can expect to pay so as long as they're okay with the worst case scenario then everybody's pretty much happy all right the nice thing guys like we had kind of mentioned before is that you're going to be working with a lot of people who aren't necessarily technical or this might be their first time ever having done something like project management or actually building an application or being in charge of building an application or even dealing with developers in a lot of cases, um, de uh, dealing with code and developers in a lot of cases. So there's a lot of miscommunication that's possible, but I think it's your job as the developer and as the entrepreneur, obviously as the business owner, it's up to you to speak in a way that is easy for the business people to understand and that you know they can feel free to talk to you and share their ideas of what they're envisioning and expect you to pretty much provide the technical solutions for them but at the same time you have to be able to be prepared to kind of know how to traverse what the business people are actually asking of you because they won't always know exactly what they're trying to say so they'll probably refer to some other site they've used before and say oh you know something like this you know i just want to build something like this easy breezy and they have no idea how long that's going to take they don't know how difficult that is for you they have no idea what that entails you got to think that you know if we see something so many times guys on so many different websites and certain features have just become really common in modern web development and modern websites so a lot of people just tend to think that those things are, you know, simple to do or just very quick to do or it shouldn't be that, that difficult. Or, so it's up to you to basically be able to prioritize things and explain things to them and tell them why certain things aren't as simple as, you know, it might seem or it can't be done as quickly as it might seem or that, you know, something isn't your area of expertise. Like there's just a lot of things that can come up and they won't necessarily understand what the obstacles and limitations are and it'll be your job to really communicate that and provide them with alternatives and options that they can understand and allow them to kind of make choices but it's up to you to really walk them through those choices so that they can clearly understand what the choices are um so yeah just being prepared to work with people who don't necessarily know your realm but that's also why you have to know how to communicate and do the soft skill stuff very well because 
again, they're trusting you and they're paying you to build something, right? And you're the expert in this case. So they're gonna need to, you know, explain things to you as best they can, but you're gonna have to figure out how to really turn that into, you know, working software and something that provides them with the solution that they need. Tracking your work and showing your progress and having a way to do that. That's really, really, really critical and it's gonna be extremely critical. So when you are working as a 1099 freelance contractor, guys, it is going to be super imperative that you are able to document, you know, everything that you've been doing and all the time that you spend because there's no one there in HR that you can go to and pretty much say that you haven't been getting compensated or that this is billed incorrectly or anything like that. Like invoicing and timing, time tracking, uh, and pretty much delivery on all those things, communication with the client, paying your taxes, all those things are gonna be completely on you. It's gonna be incredibly important that you are able to document and show your work so that you never have to run into that issue of not getting paid or, or just mismanaged communication or you know anything like that. It can ruin the contract, ruin your project, ruin your reputation, ruin your business. So you just absolutely don't want that. Stay on top of your stuff by documenting and tracking your time. Now, how do you do that? So I'm gonna show you guys some apps that I use. One of them is called Clock In, and what it is is just a time tracking or timekeeping uh, application. So you guys can grab this from the App Store, the Google Play Store. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you use. Uh, the one I'm using is not free. I'm using the free version right now, but I'm likely gonna pay for the upgraded version because it's only like six bucks and it's definitely worth it. Basically just go in and assign a client and then you can just add your time entry. So you can either you know manually add an entry with the time or you can just start the timer and start working. And then when you get done, you can add in your description of the work that you did and everything. And it already adds it to the client with the hourly rate and everything attached to it. So the best part about that to me is all the different formats and ways that you can actually export the data once you finish tracking all your time, whether it's like for the month or for the whole project or whatever it is. Um, you can just go through and you can get it in plain text, you can get it in CSV, or there's this really cool like PDF or styled sheet that you can grab. It's really, really nice. What I like to do is export this and then email that along with an invoice to the client to be able to show them exactly what I was doing, exactly from what time to what time and on what dates I was doing things and show them exactly what I'm billing them for. So, um, but again, guys, you don't have to use clock in any sort of time tracking or time keeping app will work just fine. But my point is that you should have some sort of you know, tool or something in mind application that allows you to track your time and, you know, give the client something to show exactly, you know, what you were doing for them. So since we're talking about tracking your work and showing your progress and everything like that, it's going to be very important too to make sure that you are clear about your commitments and what exactly you're going to be delivering to the client. And the reason I say that is because when, again, you're dealing with people who aren't necessarily technical and they don't know exactly what's all involved and what exactly developers do. And, you know, the lines can kind of get blurry as in terms of like when your contract is gonna end or where your line of support stops or how long they can reach out to you and contact you after the project ends. So you have to really set clear boundaries about where you're going to begin and end the project and where you're going to hand it off and then where you're going to need additional contracts and things like that going forward um, to continue doing any sort of work. So I think having that discussion, and again, this could be like in the form of a written document, some sort of uh, agreement or a contract that basically list out exactly what you plan to deliver, what you are going to do. Now, that example that I showed you guys earlier, it could be ex you know, exactly that document that you use, but the point is that you wanna just have something that clearly states where you're going to end the project or what you're going to develop. And then at that point, the contract is over and then you can negotiate another contract in the future for more support or for more development work or whatever the case might be. So yeah, guys, just have a way of clearly and concisely, you know, relaying to the client what you're gonna deliver and what you plan to commit to. When you're working as a freelancer or a 1099, you're likely gonna have to pay some sort of additional taxes that you typically, you know, would be taken out from your employer. So you're gonna wanna look at your state, you know, 
contract and freelance and all that stuff laws i'm not a cpa or anything like that but you're gonna just want to look at your tax laws and see for a 1099 you know contract worker in your state if you have to pay any additional state taxes or anything like that or just talk to somebody who knows more about you know the tax laws in your state than you do and just find out how much money you should be putting aside from you know every check and whatever pay that you get so that you know you can have that for taxes and not have to worry about you know owing money and stuff down the road now with that aside what should you be charging for your services and i think the key thing is that you should be charging more than whatever you currently make all right so if you're a software developer and you have a job you should definitely be charging more than whatever you get paid per hourly rate at your job um i think it only only makes sense now if you don't have a job then i think you have to hop on to like upwork or task rabbit or fiverr and look at the market for software developers and see what the average software developer is you know or web developer is getting Hey, at the end of the day, it just gives you a ballpark range. So between, you know, if you know people who have jobs in software engineering, you know what they make, and then you can look online at different sites like this and kind of just compare those two and come up with an average and just find out like where you are, how confident you feel, but charge somewhere in there with the professionals so that you know that you're, you're pretty much charging a competitive rate and enough that is going to be more than just working at your job because if you get paid the same thing you get paid at your job to do a side project then it's basically just working more hours at your job just on a different project so you know motivate yourself guys like charging more money on these side projects is going to really motivate you to show you that you can do this and push you to do your best work on that project not to mention you have to pay taxes so yeah that's just my advice on what you guys should be charging on these freelance projects And the last thing guys is make sure you have separate contracts set up for different phases of the project. So when you're doing initial discussions and plannings and meetings, you're going over things like mock-ups and designs and features and you're refining things like coming up with MVPs and all this stuff. This is all kind of like pre-development kind of like meeting communication type stuff, planning stuff. So. You know, you might want to set up a contract that specifically deals with your time for just things like that. Just the meetings, the planning, the research, the ongoing discussions. You might have weekly discussions or bi-weekly meetings or something like that where you're meeting with the client and you guys are just discussing the vision of the project. And you're doing research in your free time and, you know, coming up with solutions to things that they're asking you and you're researching things that you don't already currently know. And those are all things that are billable hours, guys. You are working during that time. That's the importance of working for yourself. You have to consciously tell yourself that you're working and open that app and hit that button and start a time entry and start billing those hours because you guys are working. So um, make sure that, you know, you have a contract for that because that's separate from the work you're going to be doing when you're actually developing and coding and doing all that. And at the same time, you're going to want to charge different prices, right? So, you know, you're going to want to have a certain contract or a certain dollar amount agreement for when you're doing things like planning and meetings, stuff like that. And then you're going to want to set up a, a separate one when you're about to start doing the development work and get started on whatever features and whatever you guys agree to you're going to want to set up a contract around that as well because you might have a different dollar amount and you're going to want to just again set your boundaries for like support and things like that after the project is over and you might also have some deadlines and stuff in there too that the client might want so all these things will be worked out in different contracts but i think the really important thing about having different contracts set up though is that it really protects you between contracts so if something goes wrong in the planning phase or you realize that some of the people that you're working with aren't competent or you don't like the team or the project or the, the money's funny or whatever the case might be, if you have separate contracts for the planning stage and all that with the development stage, then you don't have to worry about it. You can still get paid for your time during that contract because you were there and doing your part during the, the planning and the design and all that stuff. But if things don't go well, um, you're not necessarily liable for the development and everything like that either because you have separate contracts. And if you never you know, agreed upon it or signed it, then you are responsible for it. So um, these are just really like some things that 
you know, I've learned guys. And again, like I said, it's from other ventures as well. It's not just, you know, coding and software development that these tools and these things are applicable to. You can use this for pretty much anything. But let me know if this is helpful for you guys. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys think. If you're working on any freelance gigs, what do you guys use or what have been some of your experiences with freelance gigs out here as software developers and software engineers? I'd be really curious to know. And if you guys are brand new to coding or if you're thinking about going to coding bootcamp or anything like that, make sure you check out the description box down below for my intro to coding bootcamp course. It costs nothing but your email address and it's got everything in there pretty much that I wish I learned before I went to coding bootcamp. So it shows you how to build a front end site and you get into the basics of back-end development. So it's a really great course. And there's also a link down there for my free private Facebook group where I put all the extra resources I don't put in the descriptions of these videos. So everything is over there first. So hop over there and get connected with all the people who are just over there learning and growing, guys. Um, so again, thank you guys for supporting. We're almost at 600 subscribers, pushing to 1,000. Thank you guys so much. Hit that subscribe button for me. Hit that like button. Thank you guys for all the support. It's Darian with Darian the Dev. And I'll see you guys next video, all right?